allow me to give you a couple of scriptures for you to hang on to this evening. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Jesus tells us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. On Friday, September the 23rd, death entered your life as a cruel thief. And death entered your life with starting alarm. As you gather here this evening, you're still stunned, still bewildered. I know your hearts have been crying out to the breaking point, and your faith has now been tested. Connor J. Hall, 25 years of age, has completed his journey here on earth. And as you gather here, your hearts are heavy with sorrow because you're never quite ready to let go of the people that you love. In this case, it's even harder. Because let's admit, Connor was way too young to die. And the shock of it all just makes us numb. So allow me to share a couple things with you this evening. First of all, grief is normal. And it's okay to cry. Okay, you hear me? It's okay to cry. I like the words, and I was sharing a little bit of this with Devante a little bit ago, because I know Devante's a, his best friend. And he's standing at the casket, the tears were flowing. But Max Locato, a writer, he wrote these words, those tiny drops of humanity, those wet round balls of fluid that tumble from our eyes and creep down our cheeks, and they splash on the floor of our hearts. They are always present at such times, and they should be, for that's their job. They are tiny miniature messengers on call 24 hours a day to substitute for crippled words. They drip and they drop and they pour from the corner of our souls, carrying with them the deepest emotions that we possess. They tumble down our faces with the announcements that range from the most blissful to the darkest despair. The principle is simple. When words are most empty, tears are most apt. A tear stain on a letter says much more than the sum of all its words. And this is what I was sharing with Dante. A tear falling on a casket says so much more than e any spoken farewell ever could. And what summons a mother's compassion and concern more quickly on a child's cheek? What gives more support than a sympathetic tear on the face of a friend? That task, my friend, was left for tears. So I share that with you today just to let you know that you don't need to be embarrassed by your grief because your tears this evening testify to the love that you have for Connor. Now this might be unusual for a pastor to say, but I know that these are the emotions that you're feeling. It's okay and it's normal to be angry. It's okay. But please, don't stay angry, okay? Just work through the grief. And today you're sitting here and saying, well, I'm numb. Is it okay if I'm numb that I don't feel anything? Yes. Because that's another part of the human emotion. Because when you love somebody as much as you have loved Connor, it hurts deeply to lose him. And when you love somebody who has brought so much joy and laughter into your lives, sometimes you care so much that you just physically can't comprehend the loss. And your system shuts down for a while. You get numb. And that's God's way of helping you to cope. The death of such a young man who had yet to live his life to the fullest of all his beauty and wonder and potential, it's hard to bear. So you'll have the different emotions. I just encourage you just to work through them. But as we gather here this evening, we don't want to gather to celebrate death. But we gather here to celebrate a life. Even though it was a short 25 years, talking with you and hearing your memories, Connor lived life. He loved life. And he lived life to the full. So we gather here to remember his life. We want to remember how his life has touched each and every one of you that are gathered here. And can you take comfort this evening knowing that Connor brightened up your life? 
for all the time that you knew him? Connor was a gift to all of you. And even though mom and dad, and Kayla, sisters, family, he was a gift, even though it was a short few years. He was still a gift to all of you. So through the tears and the heartaches this day, I encourage you to recall the many happy hours that you've had with Connor. Connor was loved by his family and his many friends. So let's remember all the good in Connor's life that we can recall. Connor was born on May the 9th, 1997 in Beaver, Pennsylvania. He is the son of Jeffrey W. Hall and Kathy Sayre. In addition to his parents, he is survived by his maternal grandmother, Sandra. Also left to cherish his memories are his sisters, Lisa and her husband, Ted, and Delaney. His nephews, Teddy and Hugo, his uncle George and Julie, and his Aunt Pam. Many cousins left to cherish Connor's memory. Sam, Jesse, Brittany, Estella, Alexandra, and Leland. And he's also going to be deeply missed by his girlfriend and his partner, I guess maybe partner in crime, <laughs> Michaela White. Connor was preceded in death by his paternal grandparents, Jesse and Ruby Hall, his uncle Jerry Hall, and his maternal grandfather, Jack R. Sarah. He's a graduate of Beaver Local High School, class of 2015. Connor attended the Hannah E. Mullen School of Nursing, receiving his LPN, and he graduated with honors as a valedictorian. He grew up with a passion of playing sports, especially basketball. And in his spare time, he enjoyed playing video games, spending time with his family. And allow this to bring a smile to your face through the tears. He was the prankster. Love playing pranks, and you know the pranks that he played on you, so just recall those, and I'll bring a smile to your face. I just was reading in one of his school books there at a very young age. It said he wanted to be the President of the United States. <laughs> and they probably would have made a good one. That's right. We won't argue that point. We're going to share some memories, and we're going to have a couple will come up, and we're going to share some memories as well. This one. Uh, came to me from a good friend of his, Taylor Beckett, from the Hannah East School uh, of Practical Nursing in Salem. He writes to the family and to all of you, he said, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get my shift switched, but will you let Connor know that he was my homie and that I am beyond thankful for our friendship and all the times he was there for me. Tell him I'm going to be here for you like he was for me. Tell him I'll be cheering on the Steelers. Cover your ears. <coughs> and tell him I'll be checking out the sexy women for both of us. <laughs> and I was, I mentioned that to mom, and she said, that's who he was. <laughs> but I just wanted to let Connor know that I loved and cared about him very much. Love Kay. Devante. Best friend. He's going to come through his grief and he's going to share some memories of his best friend. And after Devante, Kevin Costco is going to come up and say a few words as well. Devante, you want to go first? Sorry, uh, I didn't write nothing, so like nothing was planned, so like take it easy on me. Like, don't be too hard. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, he was my only brother. Like, I don't. Like, I woke up and like had sex with him. I would talk to him every day. I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself when I was with him. It was impossible. <laughs> so, like, but I know that uh, right now with all this stuff going on that he wouldn't want us grieving, he wouldn't want us sad like he enjoyed life he wanted the best out of everybody he wanted everybody to flourish even if it wasn't himself he would break his leg to see someone else flourish in life 
as long as everyone was happy. And I just want everybody to do the same thing. He's not gone. He's just not with us physically. I'm not worried about how my life's going to be 50 years from now. Because I know he's always going to be there. He knows what I'm thinking. I don't have to tell him I'm sorry, I love him. I don't have to tell him all the things that I could have never said because I know as of right now, he knows. And I just wish the best for everybody else. And it's not going to get better, but at the same time, he wants everybody to get better. That's what I want to show. I love everybody. Even the people I don't know, the people I just met. You know, there's people in the back I've never seen in my life. I don't love me. Yeah, I love everybody here. It takes too much energy to be sad, too much energy to be negative. Ever see, enjoy life because tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. So I love everybody and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Um, like Devonte said, Connor will always be here with us. He's probably putting bunny ears behind Delaney right now and <laughs> giving Kayla a kiss on the cheek. I. I met Connor Hall many, many, many years ago, and uh, we'd always play basketball at the Y together, and he was the first person that I met that I actually got to go and hang out with, you know, I'll stay the night at his house. Um, Kathy and Jeff were very, very gracious, so I'm letting me stay there, <laughs> and probably a few too many nights sometimes, but I... Thank you more than anything for the memories that I could have with Connor. Um, you know, after a few months of hanging out with him, I realized he was my best friend, going to be my best man, and he's the brother I never had. I wish that you know I could have more memories with him. There's times where I kicked myself on why I didn't hang out with him as much as I did when I got older, but. For every bad memory you have, you need to have five good memories with them. You need to think of the good times and just work on those types of things. The amount of things him and I did together as friends and the stories that we have are endless, but I still feel like sometimes they're not enough. But that's just how life is. Uh, my brother it's gone way too soon and it's a shame but at the end of the day you got to make work with what you got and I love him I love everybody that I've met every memory that I've made and I know that he will live on as long as you keep talking about the things that you've done with him all the good times there were and I love him, and when I got older, I didn't hang out with him as much. Every time I did get to see him, he was with Devonte. <laughs> He's with D, and you know, it was still great times, and we had all these flashbacks of everything that we had happen. And he's a great person. He's a great brother, and I love him. And thank you all. Thank you, Devonte and Kevin, sharing your heart. Michaela would like me to share these words with you this evening. 
She said it's really hard to put things in a deeper manner right now. But Connor was very funny, charming, and he was so good with kids, and he loved to eat food. <laughs> he was also very determined, and when he set uh, something in motion, he was a very smart individual. Connor had a huge heart for people. It was hard not to love him or to care for him because of the person that he was. He was all around everything you could ask for in a person, despite the flaws that he did have. I personally loved the darkest parts of him because it showed me who he was and why. Dad shares these memories of his son. Connor was intelligent and charming. He lit up the room. He enjoyed time with his family and friends. And, the, and his joy of life was very contagious. He will always remember how Connor loved sports, video games, and movies. And he was wise beyond his years. And when joining in a discussion on politics or current events, he just knew how wise he was. He looked forward to furthering his career in medicine. He had ambitions on becoming a nurse practitioner. Connor was a caregiver, and it was apparent that it came from his heart. He had a true calling to make people better. I love Dad. Mom Kathy shares these words of her son. Connor had such a zest for life. Always busy and on the go, go, go. He was a deeply compassionate soul. And once he loved you, he loved you very deeply also. Especially his close family members, friends, and significant other. He was also a very, he was very deeply loved by us as well. And he was definitely the life of the party. And things really livened up when he was around. When Connor was little, he was asked what he wanted to be when he grew up, and he said, somebody's dad. <laughs> and what a great one he would have been. He was excellent with kids, Leland, Estella, and Isaiah. Mom goes on to write, he had an ordinary infectious laugh, a beautiful smile that would light up the room in which he was addicted to crest white strips. <laughs> And he would brush, brush his pearly whites four or five times a day. She recalls how he loved to play basketball, which was his favorite sport growing up, despite being groomed as a lefty by his dad for baseball. <laughs> he played all through high school in which he graduated from Beaver Local, class of 2015, the last class before the end of an era. Connor started wearing flannels to school on Fridays, in which they nicknamed it Flannel Friday. Mom says her son was a leader, not a sheep. When Connor was a child, he was a ham for the camera and he loved getting dressed up. He usually insisted on bow ties. He wanted to be a businessman at one point, and he even asked for a briefcase for Christmas at around the age of seven. Now, there's a man that had a lot of ambition. Businessman, president. <laughs> Kathy goes on to share he loved getting off the bus at Grandma Ruby's and Patty Jess's after work while his dad and mom worked entertaining them until dad got home. Connor was so outgoing and polite, pleasant and personable. He never met a stranger. He was extremely down to earth and extremely compassionate soul which made him excel at his career in which he was pursuing nursing. Connor had just finished his LPN degree from Hannah E. Mullen School of Nursing with honors as valedictorian of his class. He was extremely intelligent when it came to math, science, and pol politics. He was always up to speed with the latest world news, state of affairs, when it came to government and the affairs of what was going on with the country, and he could answer any question you ask him or he could match wits with anybody who challenged him. Mom concludes with these words. When I found out you were in my belly, 25 years was never supposed to be the part of the deal. 
there will always be an empty place in my heart where you rest, my firstborn baby boy. I will carry you with me everywhere, forever and always my love. Rest in peace. Love, Marty. A lot of memories. A lot of love. And Connor is going to be greatly missed by you, his family, and by all of you, his friends. All of you are going to miss the special times that you spent with Connor. Those times are very precious to you. And I know that there's so much more that you want to do and say. But this evening as you gather here, I know there's, sen there's a sense of aching void. As you think of the one whom you love who has now gone from among you, you're going to miss Connor's companionship. And tonight your grief is deep. And tonight your grief is very personal. Because when death strikes by some tragic bewildering process, our minds automatically go to the question as to why. And I'm sure all of you have come to this place this evening with a lot of questions on your mind. And I know the one demanding question at a time such as this, especially for such a young man in a tragic accident. And that one demanding question is why? Why this family? Why Connor? Why did he have to die so young? Why so suddenly? Why did God allow this to happen? These are definitely important questions to ask. But I do not believe that these questions can be answered this side of heaven. I don't have the answers to the why. But the answers I do have, or I should say that God has for you, I want to give you. And what I want to say, my prayer is, these words will give you hope and strength. For God has promised that he would give us these things in our time of need. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We also read these words in scripture. Now we see but a poor reflection as a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So it's normal to ask why. Even though God may not answer our why questions, he does listen to them, and he will respond in the wisest ways. If you recall, the greatest why question in the Bible was asked by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was on the cross of Calvary. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that is the why that swallows up all the other why questions. Maybe this evening you, Connor, Connor's family and friends, maybe it feels like God has forsaken you in this time of grief. But whatever friends and loved ones may do or what time may bring, God is your supreme source of comfort. To you that are cast down, hearts heavy with sorrow, Christ comes to lift up your drooping spirit, and he calls upon you to find refuge in him. Because it's God's love and God's care that's going to make it possible for you to continue on. The psalmist says, God is our refuge and our strength, an everlasting help in the time of trouble. The words of Moses, when he was facing death, he said, The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms. And it's the faith of the 23rd Psalm that says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And it's the assurance of the 121st Psalm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And it's the final assurance from Christ himself, who said, Because I live, you shall live also. He promised that he would be here for you in your time of need. So receive his presence, receive his grace, receive his love and strength for your present need. 
And because Jesus gave himself on the cross, we can trust him to have the answers to all of our lives. So today we leave the soul of Connor in the hands of a loving and merciful God. A God whom we can trust in death to take him to the life that is eternal. The psalmist says, be of good courage, he will strengthen your heart, all of you that hope in the Lord. So I urge you tonight to hold on to the one who is willing to hold on to you. And as you do, celebrate Connor's life. Allow these words of scripture to bring you comfort as we commit Connor's soul in the hands of a loving and merciful God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The words of comfort from Christ, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms, if that were not so. But I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me where I am. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes unto the Father except through him. And in the words of John the Revelator, he'll wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things have passed away. For as much as Almighty God and his wise providence has taken Connor out of this world, we now tenderly commit his soul into the hands of a loving and merciful God, a God whom we can trust in death to take him to the life that is eternal. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we want to thank you this evening for Connor's life. Father, we want to just thank you for his energy, his varied interest, and Father, most of all, we want to thank you for this caring heart that we've heard so much about this evening. Father, you promised that you would be here for us when we are in trouble or have a need. And Lord, this evening, this family needs you. Their hearts this evening are filled with pain and sorrow. But Father, in the midst of the pain and sorrow, help them to know that you are in control. And we do have to admit that we have a hard time accepting what you have allowed to happen. Keep us from turning from you when instead we should be turning towards you. As we leave this place today, Connor's memory will forever live in our hearts. Although he was not here for very long, this family and these friends are richer because of their brief acquaintance with him. Father, thank you for the joy that he brought into this family in his short 25 years. He is now in your care and your keeping. Draw us to you so that someday we might all be together again. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.